Okay, so in the last video, I showed you how to do an, a, a definite integral using geometry, and we found this, that the integral from 2 to 7 of 4 minus 2x with respect to x uh, is, was equal to negative 25. Let's try doing that same definite integral, but using the limit of the Riemann sum. And then you can compare and contrast the two different strategies, and hopefully we should come up with the same answer if I do it right, um, and if I did it right last time. Uh, this I'm doing this video, by the way, without notes, uh, just because I, I kind of doing this on a whim. I just thought it would be fun. Um, so let's 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 see here. I, I did have a feeling uh, a few videos back that I should do another one of these examples. So I, I, that's why I felt like felt like I should go ahead and just do this. Uh, all right. So this here we have as our function, you know, and I'm not going to write an equal sign yet because before I start doing a, a limit of a Riemann sum, I like to write down some information. The function I'm working with here is 4 minus 2x. 2 to 7 is my interval, so that means delta x is going to equal 7 minus 2 over n, where n is the number of rectangles, so this would be 5 over n. And then my right endpoint is going to be a plus i delta x, right? In this case, that's going to be 2 plus... 5i over n. So 2 is my a, a being the lower limit of integration here. Uh, and then I'm adding i times delta x, and I already found my delta x is 5 over n. So I've got my function here, I've got my delta x, I've got my right-hand endpoints. This is the ci, by the way. This is what I'm going to use. I'm using right-hand endpoints for my sample points. So now, now let's write equals. Now let's write the limit as n goes to infinity of the Riemann sum, i equals 1 to n. I'm going to start by writing it out in terms of f. Uh, f of my sample point, f of 2 plus 5i over n, uh, and then multiplied by delta x, so times 5 over n. Okay, so there we go. So there's, uh, there's what I'll start with. Now I'm going to actually apply the function that we're working with here, this linear function, 4 minus 2x. So we have i equals 1 to n. Uh, in place of where this f of x was, I'm going to put 4 minus 2x, and then that's still going to be times 5 over n. Okay, So inside here, we're going to have 4 minus 2 times x. And what was x? x is the sample point, ci, which, using the formula for right-hand endpoints, is 2 plus 5i over n, like that. So there we go. So that is uh, applying the function. So now I'm going to uh, do some things. I'm going to, um, first I'm going to distribute this negative 2. So in that set, and for that step, we're going to get uh, 4 minus 4. Oh, ho, ho, this is nice. 4 minus 4, okay, this is going to cancel, and then minus 2 times 5i over n. Uh, so that'd be negative 10i over n. And then still times 5 over n. We've got to do that. Um, that's looking good. One more step. I'm just going to multiply those things together. That's going to be negative. Oh, you know what? In this step, I'm going to multiply those things together. But I'm going to, I'm going to just to save some space because I don't have a lot of room here. I'm going to do 5 times, sorry, the negative 10 times 5 and pull that out. That's negative 50. And then over n times n, that's over n squared. I can pull that out too. At least I can pull, the, I pull the, all of that out of this sum. And the reason for that is because as far as the sum is concerned, uh, the only variable is this i. And i is, i is right there. Check out where i is, right? i is in there, it's just, just i, it's not raised to any power, it's just i to the power one, right? And so all that other stuff that was multiplied by i, we factored out of the sum. So now all we need to do is figure out what that sum is equal to, which that is a, um, that right there is a summation formula I happen to have memorized. It's n times n plus 1 all over 2, like that. Uh, so now, looking at this, we can see the numerator is going to be a, a quadratic, uh, and the denominator is a quadratic. They're both degree 2. So um, that means that the limit, as n approaches infinity, this is going to be the ratio of leading coefficients. And the leading coefficients, as we look at these, are going to be negative 50 and 2. So it should be negative 50 over 2, which is negative 25. And we did it. And it was the same. Oh, I'm so proud of myself that I didn't make a mistake either time. Uh, well, actually, I guess I could have made a mistake both times uh, and then just happened to have made mistakes that produced the same wrong answer. 
Um, but I'm pretty sure I didn't do that. That seems pretty unlikely. So uh, I think I did it right both times. Um, once via geometry, which personally, I like the geometry strategy a little better, this idea of subtracting triangles from each other and you know applying the other properties of definite integrals that I've discussed. I like this strategy a little better, um, but of course, when, you know, when doing a definite integral, you can always go back to the, back to the definition and do it the long way. Um, I will probably ask you to do it this long way. I call it the long way because it does tend to tend to be a little longer. Doing the limit of a Riemann sum, I will ask you to do this specifically using this strategy on the exam um, like one time. Um, but then uh, for other definite integrals, you'll be allowed to use whatever properties you like. All right, so I think that'll do it for this video.